Hi, have you been watching our videos on this channel, Daily TV? We hope that they have been informative and resourceful. If you haven't subscribed, this is a good time to hit the subscribe button so that you can get more and more of this lesson. In this week's episode, we are going to be discussing performance management in a dairy farm. To discuss this subject, we will use a tool called KPI, in full, Key Performance Indicators. Maybe you ever worked in a job where you are required to meet certain targets. KPI is a very popular word outside of dairy, where a staff or an employee is given a set of targets and they are supposed to be checked through indicators to show that they have been able to reach this target. In a dairy farm, we have KPIs as well. Now, it is very difficult to know how a farm is performing by just looking at it or at the cows, at the workers, at the books with your own eyes. Unless things are so bad, the cows look so bad, or you can be able to see quite obviously that the farm is not managed well. But in an average farm, or a farm that is being managed above average, you need to look a little harder to be able to know how the farm is performing. This is why for every farm, key performance indicators are recommended. To be able to know whether the farm is reaching its targets, then you have to put a number against every KPI. So which are these areas where we put a number? In a farm, we can look at, right from the beginning, the calves or the young stock. Put some numbers around them. We are going to be looking at what numbers are around the calves. Then two, breeding. What kind of numbers are, we, are going to guide us on our performance in breeding? The distribution of the herd how they are categorized, how many of these lactating hours do we have, how many dry, how many young stock, how many newborns, and so on. We can also put a KPI on the distribution of the herd. Then milk production, so also a KPI. We can put a number. And then fodder production, very important, we can also put a number. In an earlier episode, we said that if the fodder production part, which is an enterprise on its own that is very connected to the dairy, if there's a lot of inefficiency in the fodder production and the KPIs are not met, then it's likely that that inefficiency is transferred to the dairy farm and the farm can make a loss. So it's very important that all the sections of the farm numbers are put. That helps all the workers to be able to understand what they're supposed to do so that the farm can perform optimally. And what do we do with the KPIs? The first thing is to set them. It is very important that the owner of the farm sits down with all the workers, the manager, the supervisor, and if possible, also include the consultants, the economic advisor or the accountant, the vet, the agronomist, the full-time workers who are working at the barn, the supervisor, and the owners of the farm or shareholders. They sit together and agree. This is how our farm, this is where our farm is. What is the next level for our farm? So that next level must be quantified through numbers in every functional area of the dairy farm. Let's delve a little more into the numbers. And we start with the young stock. The calves have been born. Start from there. The first KPI would be um, what, what, is, what is going to be the weight gain for these calves. If my calf is going to be a Frisian, because you know, this is a breed I want to have in my farm, then I'm able to know the adult weight, the adult weight of that breed. At about the second, third calving, a horse in Frisian will be around 600 kgs. That is the adult weight. Then I want my calf to be able to reach a certain weight at insemination. So we want the calf to be able to reach 350 to 360 kgs at the time I'm inseminating that calf. And that should be at around 15, 16 months, or even sometimes 14 months, depending on the feeding or and the development of that calf. So to be able to achieve that age, to be able to achieve that weight at that age, then it means right from birth, to be able to know the KPI, you have to weigh that calf. Take in the birth weight. I have seen that most of these farms where Frisians are being reared, a calf will be born at about between 38, 40 kgs, or sometimes 35 kgs. That weight in itself is not a very important KPI because the weight at birth will depend on the breed. But that weight helps us to know how it becomes the baseline on how we shall be calculating the weight gain of that calf. 
So very important that the first weight is taken to be able to guide us further into the growth of the calf. Then from there, we want to be weighing this calf every two weeks up to the time the calf is weaned. From there, we can begin to weigh every month. Now the question is, why do we actually weigh the calf every two weeks at the beginning? The reason is, we are able to make a correction on any feeding problems as early or as promptly as possible. If we wait for too long for young stock, then we have lost so much time to be able to correct an error in feeding or in the management of the calf. So we fast with a fortnight weighing until the calf is big enough at weaning, then we can be able to go on with a monthly weighing. Then when we weigh, it is not weighing for the weight's sake. We are writing the amount of kgs that, we, that, that the calf weighs. We are subtracting from last month's weight and we are dividing by 30 days. The number of grams that we get per day, we are now measuring ourselves against that. So we said that this calf is born at 40 kgs. We want her to be 360 kgs at the time of insemination. Then how, how fast should she grow to be able to achieve that? For Frisians, it will be around between 700 grams and 800 grams. So the question is, are we attaining 700 grams or 800 grams? If not, how, what are we attaining? If your farm is doing 500, then you can be able to say, I'm attaining 500 out of 700. Maybe I'm achieving 60% of my target. Then you can sit to the manager and say, what do we need to do for us to be able to get to 100% achievement of daily weight gain because we are 60%. That's a very beautiful way of managing performance. Your workers are going to be very motivated. They are going to be able to say, I was at 60, I'm at 70, I'm at 80. And they're able to say that the reason why we have achieved this is because we have changed the diet of the calf. So that KPI alone helps you to correct an error in feeding and attain the right weight. So the next indicator in calves is about winning. She is born at 40 kgs. We want to win her at double the birth weight. So that is going to be 80 kgs. So if she is not 80 kgs, she is not ready for winning. We'll have wind a bit early and that is not good. So we have to be able to ensure that we have the proper weight gain that at the time of weaning she has reached 80. And from there onwards, we monitor the weight to ensure that we have 60% of the adult weight by the time of insemination. Those are the most fundamental KPIs in the young stock area. It is important to mention that some farms would like to do more KPIs, like how many calves uh, die in the farm, how many calves are born stillbirth, how many calves have certain diseases, and so on. It, it's, it's always good to add the KPIs when you have been able to deal with the basic ones, then you can introduce more KPIs in every department. But for now, those are the most fundamental KPIs in the young stock. We are going to take a break, and after the break, we are going to be looking at what are the other KPIs in the other functional areas. See you after the break. Hi, my name is Winnie Kemboy. Uh, I work in the Dairy Board Laboratory and uh, today I'm going to take you through what we do in the physical laboratory. When it comes to the physical test, what we are able to do is uh, basically to look at the intrinsic factors of the milk, the quality of the products that uh, is in the market. We want to check uh, for issues to do with acidity, if there's, there was any post-contamination after processing or uh, production of the milk, we want to check for that. We also want to look if there's any adulteration in milk using uh, water or solids or even preservatives where need be. So once we do this test, we compile the test results with the ones received from microbiology, chemical, laboratory for us to be able to issue a certificate of analysis to the client. The other key element that we look at in the testing that we do is uh, just to compare if the nutritional elements that have been uh, highlighted in the packet of some of the products is actually meeting what is inside. For example, for calcium it is indicated here is uh, 106 milligrams. So we do test to confirm if indeed this is what has been demonstrated there. And we, all, we do all this for the range of dairy products that we have across the different value chains. Find out more what DairyBot does on the market to guarantee the safety of the products by subscribing to this channel on Matters Dairy.
Welcome back. We continue to discuss KPIs in a dairy farm. We want to see how do we manage performance in a dairy farm. How do we ensure that we continue improving the farm from where it is to better performance towards optimization. There are other areas where KPIs are also set and it is good to, to know that KPIs are actually interconnected, interconnected. They are not separated. When you do a KPI on young stock, and your calf grows in good speed, you have already begun to achieve your targets in future breeding of that calf. You have begun to, to achieve your targets in the milking, the milking or the milk production potential of that cow. So they are all interconnected. We may discuss them separately, but you see that they are one works with the other very well. So the next section is breeding. Breeding is a very important aspect. Actually, when you go to a farm, one of the leading reasons why cows are culled or selected out of the farm is breeding. Because if they cannot give us a heat, they cannot give us a calf, then they cannot give us a lactation, and they take too long being open, and therefore we lose value from that cow. So breeding is very important. So back to the young stock, who has now become a heifer? We have inseminated her at 350, 360 kgs, if she's a Frisian. Remember that I am using Frisian because the farm where I'm, I'm standing, this is the kind of cows they have. In other farms, there could be other breeds which are lighter. Maybe a farm has jersey with an adult weight of maybe 360. Uh, then in that case, you have to work out the winning, uh, the insemination weight based on the adult weight of that breed. So we cannot generalize the weights because it varies with the breeds. So to be able to inseminate at 15 months means that if she conceives, then we have another KPI to be able to get the first born calf at 24 months. Very important. We could maybe allow one or two months if there are some delay along the way, but it's always good to aim for the best and give a first born at 24 months. Then from there, we, we are expecting that cow, which has just given birth, in another 40 days to show us the first heat. That shows that we have been able to feed that cow very well that she's coming on heat only 10 days, 10, only 10 days more after the first month, so that's 40 days. We may not inseminate on that first heat, but we have to aim to have the first conception at 75 days since birth. So make sure that the cow does not exceed 75 days before we get a first conception. Then the cow is now pregnant and the calf is growing and we can aim to have another calf in about a year. If your farm, for example, out of the baseline, you have been doing about 450 days between one calf and the other, it means that we have a long calving interval. We want to benchmark ourselves with one year to have a calf every 360 days. So you can also be able to calculate how are you able to achieve at the right calving interval. Some farms would even have a cow that has not given birth for 500 days or even more. Those are good reasons to actually check that cow and if the problem cannot be rectified, then that cow is reducing the performance of the farm at the overall level. So we have to deal with that cow to ensure that we have a good performance across the herd. So very important that we check the calving interval. So once we have had, uh, we, we, have, we are sure of the calving interval, then we also have a very balanced way of counting the number of calves that we expect from, the, from a certain number of mothers who are lactating at any one time. When that goes wrong and we are not in control, then we have a problem calculating the hard growth and we have a problem with the distribution of the cows. It all begins with a long calving interval. Then we begin to see that we have so many cows that are dry waiting to give birth and very few cows that are milking. This is another very important KPI. Can we have at least 80%, 85% of cows that are milking and at least 20 or 15% of cows that are dry? Because these cows that are milking are the ones that are running the farms because they bring the liquidity. If you have a, an imbalance around there, then the farm can suffer serious cash flow problems because the bulk of the cows in the herd are dry. So you want to have 85% of the cows milking. Then you can also be able to come up with a KPA around milk production. What milk production level do you want? Now we have two things here that is very important to understand. There are some farms that are able to feed their cows to produce maximum, at maximum of their genetic potential. That one we can call it maximum yield. 
you are feeding for maximum yield. So if she's a Frisian, uh, she's called Sweden, and this one is called soy. If Sweden's mother was producing picked at 40 liters, the peak was 40 liters, then we give her a target of at least 10% better than the mother. Then that is maximum yield. But then there are other farms that will say, I know that she can do 44 liters, 45 liters a day, but then I don't have the money or the cash flow to be able to feed her to give me that production. So we can call that concept, I want maximum productivity. I'm going to give her how much money I have for her to give me as much milk as she can based on what I have fed her. That means that the farm has a limitation as to how much money they can spend on that farm. And therefore, they are going to expect the cow to give as much milk as possible based on what they have been given. But they are not able to find that cow to produce the maximum potential that they have for that breed. So that is very important. So benchmark your production based on the cows you have and the systems you want to maintain. I always advise, if you have cows that have high yielding capacity and you're only able to feed this much, and therefore there's unutilized milk production potential, then it might be a good idea to begin to breed downwards so, you have, so that you have smaller cows and so that you can be able to feed up to the maximum and get the full potential of that breed. However, if that is not possible in the short term, you can continue using your own system, but gauge your milk production and make it a KPI. The other KPI is about fodder, fodder production. In an earlier episode, we discussed about what to grow and what to buy. We said that the best thing would be to grow all the fodder that you require. However, we also said it's a reality that not all farms are able to grow all the fodder they need and sometimes they have to buy. Now for the component that you grow, it is good to benchmark yourself. How much must an acre produce? If an acre of maize silage, for those countries that use acres, others use hectares, in this case use acres, it is possible to produce 15,000 kgs in an acre. Then don't settle for 8,000. So your KPI becomes we have to produce 15,000 kgs of maize silage in one acre. Then if you're producing 10, you are achieving only, only about two thirds of the, 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 the total potential production of that acre. What do you do? Is it to work on the soil, work on fertilizer? But you have to aim for the best. Once you do optimal production of fodder, then of course we have a chance to make the dairy perform optimally. So I think that is very, very important that we can be able to look at all KPIs interconnected. But one more important uh, uh, indicator is the health, the health of the cows. This KPI must be maintained very strictly because it gives us an indication of are we letting the cows get sick too much? For example, mastitis. How many mastitis cases should we have? It should be less than 5%. Of all the cows, less than 5%. If you have 10%, too bad. If you have 15%, it's bad. But you have to keep bringing it down until it is less than, five, less than 5% so that we have manageable mastitis, whether clinical or subclinical mastitis. And you can also benchmark yourself on other diseases. How many cows am I having to treat at in one time? You can be able to reduce the number because that's an expense. The lower the number, the lower the expense. Also for the cows that are pregnant and time comes for them to give birth, you can also put a KPI on uh, how many calves, are, how, how many abortions you have in the farm. Minimize the abortions so that if you have 10 calves that are expected to be born, let all of them be born normal and uh, healthy. It's very important. But it's good also if you have said a number of abortions, then you agree with your team at the farm, how do we reduce the abortions? So what are we talking about? In every, in every part of the farm, it's actually possible to make a KPI. In some farms, when you start this process, begin with the most fundamental, most basic KPIs, and as the farm grows and achieves its targets, then you can be able to expand your scope of KPIs and work on them, be very consistent, and make sure that every farm meeting is based on those KPI targets. Discuss KPIs in every farm meeting so that the targets are met and the farm, the, the, the farm workers are helped on how to achieve those targets. So this sums up our discussion on KPIs. I hope that now 
you can be able to, to, to manage the performance of your farm, whether you are present or not present, by putting a very strict structure on KPIs for every department and making sure that it forms the main agenda for your farm meeting. This brings us to the end of this topic on KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. Look out for our next episodes on this channel. Remember to subscribe for more of these videos.